Well, hello, boys and girls. I'd like to say hello to my grandchildren, Israel, Judah, Gracelyn, Jeremiah, and Raylan, and to all the other boys and girls. You see Mark and Sandy here, and they've got a globe. They've got this thing here that represents the globe. The whole gospel to the whole world is what we want. And today we're talking about prayer. Did you know that we're supposed to pray for our families? And we're supposed to pray for our church. We're supposed to pray for people in the world. We're supposed to pray for people that are sick. There's so much to pray for. And that's what I'm talking about today, about prayer. Prayer closet. We get alone with God in our secret place. Or we go to church and get on our knees and we pray. Or go up to the altar and pray. There's different times that we pray for different things. But we always start off our prayer with praise. And then we wait to hear from God. We confess our sins before God. We read the Bible sometimes while we're praying. Sometimes we ask Him for things. We make our prayers, our petitions known to God. Intercession, that's when we pray from the bottom of our heart for other people. When we pray that God's will be done. We pray the Word. See, so you, you read the Word, you pray the Word, and you give thanksgiving to God. You thank Him for food to eat and clothes to wear. You thank Him for your parents. You thank Him for your church. There's all kinds of things that you pray about. You sing sometimes during your prayer time. If you pray a whole hour, sometimes you might sing a little bit. And you might even meditate. You just think about You just think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. And you listen. That's some more waiting. It's when you listen. Do you hear the still small voice of God? Did you know that Samuel heard Jesus calling his name? He heard God calling his name. Samuel heard Samuel, and he thought Eli was calling, and he ran in there to, he ran in there and says, um, you called? Eli's like, no, I didn't call. And so Samuel went back to bed, and he heard Samuel, and it happened several times. Finally, Eli caught on. He says, when you hear that voice again, that's the Lord. You say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. So sometimes you listen. God might not call your name, but he might. But he'll put on your heart something that you need to do. He might call you to preach. He might call you to go witness to somebody. He might call you to go lay your hand right there in your prayer meeting. He might you might feel in your heart, I need to go pray with so and so, or I need to go I need to go tell my mom I'm sorry I, for something I did. You just listen. You let God speak to your heart, and then you praise. That's a prayer. Well, now you don't have to pray exactly like this. This is just an example. If you pray each of these sections for five minutes, it comes up to an hour. Now, you might end up going to pray, and you might praise for half an hour, and, and you might um, intercede for other people for a half an hour, and there's your hour. You might pray two or three hours, just whatever God lays on your heart. And one of my friends, she talked about her prayer closet. She said, this is the place where attitudes are adjusted. This is places where priorities are reestablished. You know, what you think you want to do, God can turn it around. Motives are revealed. God shows your true feelings in your heart, why you're doing what you're doing. Wills are laid down. You say, not my will, but thy will be done. Conviction is felt. felt. Oh, I shouldn't do that. i got to do different. Repentance is spoken. You ask God to, re that you ask God to forgive you. Grace and mercy are received. You thank God for his grace and his mercy. You praise him. Battles are fought. We, we fight battles, not flesh and blood, but against principalities. And that's when we're interceding, when we're praying, have these spiritual um, wars. You know, we're fighting against the devil, and Jesus is going to win. Um, intercession is made. Praise is offered. We just give praise to God. Our faith is increased. We feel like if we just go over there and lay, lay our hands on somebody and pray for them, they're going to be healed. We have that faith. The blood is fled. We, we plead the blood of Jesus upon our lives and that God will cover us and protect us from harm and protect us from um, anything that's against uh, that comes against us. We find answers. We pray and God gives answers. Direction is given. Peace reassured. Strength is built up. His presence is known. We feel the presence of God so strong during our prayer times and when we're praising Him and lifting Him up. His voice is heard. That's why we listen. Victories are won. Revival is born. And that's what we want. We want a revival of souls. You know how Peter fished all night and caught no fish? And then Jesus walked by and said, throw your net on the other side. And, and they did. And it was so full. They caught so many fish. 
That's how revival, sometimes you think that you don't see a lot of people getting saved, but then all at once, great revival. It's just like here and there, people are coming, getting baptized and getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Backsliders are coming back to church and just all kinds of things. Revival happens, and that's from people praying. It happens in the prayer room, in the prayer closet. Wounds are mended. You get your heart broken, you get your feelings hurt, but we find forgiveness. We, we learn how to forgive others in the prayer room. Answers, um, prayer, you know, like the prayer chart at church, there's a lot of people's needs that um, we pray for. But we start getting a mark off. This person got healed. This person got delivered. This person got saved. Answered prayers in the prayer room. And that's, that's just something um, I wanted to share with you. There's books about prayer. Sister Joy Haney wrote a book called When Ye Pray. She also has one about when ye fast. But today we're talking about prayer. And it's very, it talks about all kinds of great things God did. Revival was born in her city when, um, when she was writing that book about praying. Here's another book about a prayer of a praying husband. Men and women need to pray. The husbands and the wives. The um, brothers and the sisters. The boys and the girls. Everybody needs to pray. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, I would that men everywhere would pray, lifting up holy hands. You know, so everywhere. There in Kansas, and Colorado, and Ohio, and in Indiana, here in Tennessee, all over the world, in the Philippines, in Africa, in Ireland, all over places. Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what we need to come up. And so Mark and Sandy, they're, go they're over here, and what you guys going to do? What you going to talk about? Hey, you know what, boys and girls? Grand star to you, Sister Lisa, to us. She made lemon cake. <laughs> yes, I did make a lemon cake. Mmm, it smells so good. Yeah, I made it this morning. It's not all put together yet. I made the cake and I made the, the filling for it, and I still got to make the icing for it. But Mark and Sandy, they, they can smell it. <laughs> yeah, mmm, it smells so good. Mark, didn't I comb your hair? Yeah, you did. <laughs> yes, I did, but when I picked him up, I brushed him across the seat. Sandy's going to comb his hair with her chin. <laughs> there, that looks better. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, you know, boys and girls, we didn't do a whole lot with Mark and Sandy today. No, we didn't do very much at all, but we like to learn about prayer. Yes, we like to learn about prayer. When God's people pray, He does marvelous things. That's right. He does, and boys and girls, I pray for you. I love you, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. <laughs> That's right. Well, bye-bye.